Hey everyone, it's David Sirota. So we're doing a live video today about the situation that has gone, has become really a firestorm over the national debate over taxes. If you followed the story over the weekend, there's a big hashtag on Twitter that uh, has trended called um, Corker Kickback. What is that about? Well, it's about a series of stories that we've been reporting at International Business Times, uh, a series of stories about what has been inserted into the final tax bill. Uh, the final tax bill was different from the original House bill and the original se uh, Senate bill. And there's a key difference that's really important to understand as you look at who is voting for this bill and who is not voting for this bill, specifically when you focus in on Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, who has been considered a key swing vote in this bill. Uh, he could bring down the whole bill. So here's the story. In the uh, House and Senate passed bills, there were provisions dealing with what's known as pass-through income. This is income generated from uh, limited liability corporations, LLCs, partnerships, and the like. And in general, the bills sought to reduce some of the taxes on income, uh, so-called pass-through income, earned off of uh, those LLCs. Now, the House bill had a sweeping kind of tax cuts uh, with few, relatively few restrictions on how these tax cuts could be applied to pass through income. The Senate bill uh, included uh, restrictions that the pro proponents of this said was designed to make sure that the tax cuts didn't go to uh, uh, LLCs that weren't employing people. So here's the thing you got to understand is that uh, some people use these LLCs basically like shell companies. They put their real estate assets uh, into uh, an LLC in order to glean various benefits from that kind of complex shell company structure. Other people use LLCs as their business to employ people. So the Senate bill included these provisions to try to uh, restrict the tax benefits from going to LLCs that didn't employ people. Uh, so the House comes together with the Senate and irons out a final bill. And the final bill appeared at first glance to go with the Senate provision, to keep those restrictions in place so that LLCs wouldn't be, uh, what critics say, abused uh, by people uh, who want to use them uh, just to put their real estate assets into and not really uh, employ anybody, not use them as true, what we might think of as true businesses. So the, set, this, the, the bill that the House and Senate came up with seemed like they were going with those seemingly sensible Senate restrictions, except as we reported, as we exposed, the bill, the final bill included a provision that created a narrow way for LLCs that are primarily real estate based, that employ nobody, to get that tax benefit. Now, who does that benefit? Well, it may benefit Donald Trump. It may, be, because Donald Trump has a lot of LLCs with real estate properties in them uh, uh, that generate rental income, uh, apartment buildings and the like. And tax experts told us that's what this provision that was put into the final conference bill was designed to keep the tax cut for, specifically for that sector. So Donald Trump is one person. And here's another person, Bob Corker. Federal records that we reviewed show that Bob Corker last year alone made up to $7 million in outside income from real estate related LLCs. So in other words, let's review the timeline here. And I should always say, I should say, as I t as me and my fellow journalists know, politicians hate when you put things on a timeline. But let's go through the timeline. Bob Corker votes against the original Senate bill when it has the restrictions in the bill that could potentially restrict him from being personally enriched by the tax bill. Corker says he's voting against the bill because of deficits. Then fast forward to the final bill. In the hours before the final bill was made public, Corker announced that he's for the bill. What's changed? Well, the provision allowing him to take advantage, potentially, of those LLC, real estate related LLC tax cuts, that's now in the final bill 
And Bob Corker is now announcing suddenly a reversal that he's voting for the bill. And the key and another point to know about this is that he had said he voted against the original bill because of deficits. Well, the final bill, the Joint Committee on Taxation, said would create one point five trillion dollars more of deficits. So, again, he votes against the bill when it includes provisions that could potentially restrict him from personally benefiting from it. Then he announces suddenly that he's voting for the bill when a provision pops up in the final bill that would allow him to access him and other real estate LLC investors, allow them to access these major tax cuts. Now, it's true that, again, these, made, these tax cuts, this specific provision, this is going to benefit potentially Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, House Speaker Paul Ryan, a handful of top Republican lawmakers who have been overseeing this bill, uh, and Bob Corker. Th those are th some of the people who federal financial disclosure records show have these particular kinds of LLCs. So people have looked at this timetable that we laid out in our reporting, and they've said, did Bob Corker get a kickback? Was this the thing that made Bob Corker suddenly reverse his vote? Hard to know. We've only reported the facts. It's hard to know motives and the like. But it is important to know that on Sunday, John Cornyn, the Texas senator, went on national television. He was asked about all of this. He was asked a direct question. Why did you put this provision into the final bill? And he ended up saying, in, di in direct response to that question, he ended up saying that they were trying to cobble together the votes that they needed to pass the bill. So you be the judge. Was this provision? that could potentially make Bob Corker lots of money added into this bill in order to get his vote? And did he switch his vote in order to, uh, because this provision was in there? Corker called International Business Times twice. It was fascinating and almost bizarre. He first called us and he, see, he started criticizing the, uh, the, the provisions that we had identified, saying they were ridiculous. Uh, then he called back and walked back that criticism. Now, with this firestorm of, of, of outrage and this hashtag Corker kickback, he has sent a letter to Senator Orrin Hatch, the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, uh, demanding to know how this provision got into the bill. He's also arguing that the provision isn't new, that, a, that the House version of the bill which, of course, Corker didn't vote on, but the House version uh, had other provisions much like this. And now Hatch, this morning, has just written back saying this is disgusting that anyone would imply that this was put in for Bob Corker. But you be the judge. Those are the, the fact pattern I have laid out are the indisputable facts. And Bob Corker clearly uh, is, in a, is in a tough position. Orrin Hatch doesn't want to have to answer for this. The Republicans don't want to have to answer for this. But these are the facts. They have put a provision into the final bill that would enrich, potentially, Donald Trump, Bob Corker, the Kushners, top Republican lawmakers who are helping write the tax bill, who also personally have these LLC, real estate related LLC investments. That is an indisputable fact. And there's going to be a lot of smoke and there's going to be a lot of noise that's designed to make you and make everybody ignore that or think there's nothing to see here. These are huge tax cuts. This is part, these, these provisions are part of a section of the bill that the Joint Committee on Taxation in Congress estimates would cost $400 billion. $400 billion that the, this provision is a part of. So this is a huge, huge issue. And here's the thing, Corker's vote could end up making or breaking the entire tax bill. John McCain is probably not going to be able to be at the vote because of his health problems, which means if two Republican votes switch, the entire Trump tax bill will go down. Corker was against it, suddenly for it, when a provision is, in, is now in the final bill that could enrich him personally. He is a former longtime real estate mogul. Uh, you can look at his federal financial disclosures. You, make the, you be the judge on whether it was a kickback or not. We have simply laid out the fact pattern. That's all that we have done. And if people want to come to their conclusions, they can come to, to conclusions. We're going to continue to report this story. Stay tuned for our reporting at International Business Times, for instance, for a whole series of stories that's going to be coming out today all about this. But those are the facts. That's what's going on. And the question is, will Bob Corker ultimately vote for a bill that now includes a provision to enrich himself, or will he vote against the bill 
using his old argument that the bill increases the deficit too much. Which way will he vote? And why did he ultimately switch his vote? That's the big question.